1994 Honda Civic timing belt and the water pump replacement. Kind of in the middle of it. We take the valve cover off first. Four 10 millimeter bolts right here. Take the uh, wires out of the holes. And take a screwdriver and pry up on this and get this off. Doesn't have to be the first step, but it's off out of the way. Then uh, remove the power string pulley. This has two 12 millimeter bolts right there. Go in the sides of this bracket right here. This, of course, makes it go up and down. Just a nice little wing nut. And it's off to the side. This slides out of a little slot right here. This one had cruise control. Yours may or may not. It's right there. Had three 10 millimeter bolts here, here, and over here. Took this bracket off. Four 14 millimeter bolts right here. Took the bolts off and get this bracket off here. And these are probably 17 millimeter here, nuts, and here. There's an engine mount down here, so the engine will not fall too far, but it's always a good idea to support the engine so things don't just drop. If you have a jack, it's good to support that. So we'll be taking this out. Then there's a 12 millimeter bolt on the alternator. Loosen that. Also a 14 millimeter nut on the bottom. Loosen that and uh, got the belts off. You can see the belts off. We actually have the timing marks right here. So we can get those close to top dead center, which is that little notch right there on the timing cover. So we're getting ready to uh, take those 17 millimeter nuts and a bolt out right there. And we'll let the engine hang a little bit. So now you're caught up, I believe. And then you just have to take the 10 millimeter bolts out of the timing cover. So we'll be right back with that engine mount out. Also draining the coolant. There's a petcock a drain on the bottom of the radiator. You can lefty loosey, righty tighty loosen it and drain it into a bucket. So we will be doing the water pump which is in the back underneath this timing cover. So the two nuts are off. And you can really see it didn't drop too far at all. And that mountain looks to have a small tear in it. It's possible we could replace that then at this time. And let's get that nut off. I just wanted to show you the, how little it drops. Then we got a 17 millimeter bolt in here. And you are gonna need a holding tool of some kind. This doesn't seem to have the typical holding tool, but we have a one inch gun which will take or break any bolt. And we got it off that way. These are uh, holes here maybe for a holding tool. Doesn't seem to have the usual typical holding tool. So that needs to come off. So you need to find a holding tool for that. So it'll come off. Otherwise it does usually slide off pretty easy. Don't lose that key either. These keys can fall out. They're, they don't stay in that well. So make sure you don't lose that. And we can begin to take the timing cover off. Just 10 millimeter bolts. Work your way up or down and uh, we'll get it off. The top cover does have to come off first though. So we'll get that cover off. Got our two bolts out and this should just come off. You kind of see it's got an inner linking piece here. I think all the pieces are off for the bottom too. See how it links in there. That's broke. That's not necessarily unusual over time to see things like that broken. There's the cover. 
and there's the belt and the water pump right there. Water pump, I believe, is held down by like five 10 millimeter bolts as well. Going to line this up with top dead center on the bottom, and it's got these lines on here one here and one here. Those lines need to match up with the edge of the head. So like put a ruler on here and reach it across. And we're just gonna line it up with the edge of the head. And we'll go to the bottom and put the crankshaft on top dead center and that should line everything up. So we've got a wrench, I'm gonna try and dial it into top dead center. And I'll show you that once. It's better over here. That looks like it's it. The belt's in the way of the arrow, but ugh. you can see the white maybe or maybe not on the, and there's a groove right here, and there's an arrow back there. We'll see it better when the belt's off, but that's lined up there. Then we can go up top and double check our cam marks and uh, maybe take the belt off. Tensioner and spring. Looks like the water pump is starting to leak a little bit. That's a 12 millimeter on the tensioner. So we just wrench this, loosen it. We can maybe go ahead and pull it by hand all the way down as far as it'll go and then tighten it back up. That'll make taking the belt off easier. Or you can just take it off. I think we'll be replacing all the parts. So we might just take it off, but uh, just take a peek and that's how everything looks. And the spring in there. Let's take stuff off. And 14 millimeter. They're pretty good. <laughs> Loosened it and pull it down. Just enough, maybe give it some slack. Tighten it back up. We take the belt off. It's pretty easy. It slides off. And the belt is off. And we do have a timing component kit. It gives us the pulleys and the water pump and the belt. And all kinds of cool stuff. So we're gonna take this off. As long as we're right here. I did drain the coolant already. There we go. I think you can see the water pump and Two bolts down here, two bolts down here, and uh, two or three up front. I guess there's a bracket for the alternator we gotta take off. 14 millimeter up there as well. Just wanted to show you quickly the time belt kit I got. One that's certainly available to you anywhere. I don't usually show the seal replacement on that because uh, take some special tools. Well, don't have to, but using a screwdriver, you can possibly scratch the cam, and you'll never get to the seal with the scratch on it. But, see, so you got a timing belt, water pump, tensioner, assembly, like the old one, water pump gasket, some nice instructions, even with some torque information on it, which is nice. Instructions, pretty handy. So there's our kit we're gonna use. There's a 14 millimeter bolt holding that bracket on that actually goes through the water pump to the engine, so we need to take that out. So we can get the water pump off besides the two other uh, 10 millimeter bolts. Right here, not a huge deal. Just unscrew that. 
In order to put the water pump on, we're going to want to put that bolt in, of course. Uh, when you're putting the water pump on loosely, just so we make sure that everything lines up. Ugh, just push that back. It's out of the way. Yeah, we'll put that bolt in like this when we're putting the new water pump on just to make sure we can actually get the bolt on. We don't want to tighten up those four or five water pump 10 millimeter bolts and find out that it's just cockeyed enough and it doesn't uh, go through that hole. So we'll put all the bolts in loosely. Then once we know this thread's in, we can tighten up the 10 millimeter bolts. Of course, pull that out and put the bracket on. So we're just gonna take the 10 millimeter bolts off and uh, pull this water pump out. Someone used quite a bit of silicone as well as the rubber gaskets. We'll need to clean that off with the scraper of some kind. Get that clean before we put the new one on. Probably don't need that much silicone. Maybe they just use silicone instead. I thought they used silicone instead of a gasket, but nope, there's a gasket in there too, so. I would use just a little silicone usually to uh, hold the gasket in place, but you don't need that much silicone with the rubber gasket. A little overdone. The water pin, water pump does have dowels. There might be one stuck in the engine, we'll see, but it has these. Is there a new spring? No. No new spring. So if you want to take that plastic off, you can take this off, and I'm going to do the seal, as I maybe mentioned. 12 millimeter bolt here. You can hold this still with a screwdriver through one of the holes. Break it loose to the left. Take that off. And slide this off. There's my bolt. And it's got two 10 millimeter bolts. One's down there, one there, and this will come off. Make it easier to get that water pump in, maybe easier to clean it too a little bit. So with a little more time, make things a little easier, maybe. So I'm just finishing installing a seal on the top here, the cam seal, got this nice tool set right here. I highly recommend a set like this for removing and installing seals if you do it regularly. Makes the job really nice. It probably handles it close to 90% of the time. There's always the oddballs that you fight with, but uh, it really does a good job. And you can see I've now got, uh, got all the bolts started as we talked about with a water pump. They all turn in. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the 10 millimeters and I can take this out. All right, here's a good look at the arrow, I believe. Here's our uh, crankshaft pulley with its mark on it as well, a little dimple. Things seem to be lined up good there. So we'll go up top and check the camshaft. Marks where they should be. Okay, and here we have the cam. Kind of reshooting this video because I didn't really see it, but the word up is actually on this cam here. We have these marks over here, which basically line with the edges of the head, but then also there's a triangle here and another line, they line up. So 
We believe we've got these lined up now. So this might not be in the right spot in the video, but I wanted to let you know that when you're turning the engine over, if your timing belt's good and it's on there, just line up the marks. Now you have the marks and where they're supposed to go. And you can continue on with what we're showing in the video. So those are the marks. And before we put the uh, belt on, I got the tensioner and the spring on, and I wedged a screwdriver in here, just kind of worked it in there. And I can pull this down, basically hold it down and tighten up that 14 millimeter uh, bolt. And that'll give me the ability to slide the timing belt on and then I can uh, loosen it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'll need both hands. So we got the timing bar belt on the crankshaft pulley down there and stuff the little rag down there so it kind of stays on the teeth. We wanna pull this kind of tight, although we don't make sure the... Uh... So we get the belt strutted down on the crank pulley, then we're coming up the front side here, try to make it as tight as possible, then we're going to wrap it around, we're going to go around the water pump, and lastly we'll go around the tensioner down below. That's the plan. wish I could show you it, but I got the camera in one hand, I need both hands to do this probably, so we'll be back when it's wrapped around. It's really not too tough. You may just need to move the crankshaft or the camshaft a little bit to get the teeth lined up. Probably most important is to make sure there's really no slack on this side. You want most of the slack to be on the tensioner side so when you release that 14 millimeter bolt it'll take up the tension or the slack. Back, really not too much to it. You can see the slack over here, but not a lot of slack over here. Fairly taut. And then we can just release the 14 millimeter bolt and it should take up most of the slack with that spring. And then you want to put the uh, bolt in the crankshaft. Once you loosen the uh, 14 millimeter tensioner bolt, let it do its springing action. And you want to tighten it. And you want to turn the engine over a couple times and double check your timing marks. So we just got the belt on and we loosened the bolt so there's so some uh, tension is applied to the belt. Next up they really want you to do is actually uh, turn the crankshaft pulley back a little bit. It says three teeth on the camshaft. But turn this back a little bit so we get as much tension as possible on this belt. That's the basic idea. And then they want us to uh, retighten that bolt. So, got the belt on, loosened it up, snapped into place, turned this back a little bit, and then uh, it's tighter, and then we tighten this bolt again, and that should be it for adjusting the timing belt tension. Then we'll turn the engine, put the bolt, crankshaft bolt in, we'll turn the engine over twice by hand, and we'll make sure the time marks all line up before we put it together. If it looks good, reverse procedure to install, and of course if it's off, then just uh, repeat the procedure and get those marks lined up. Yeah. When you're adding coolant, open up this, 12 millimeters of vent. So when you add coolant in here, keep adding your 50-50 mix of coolant until fluid comes out of there and it's full and you tighten. Put the cap on, tighten that up, run it for five minutes. Should be getting some heat after five minutes if not. Shut it down and uh, double check your coolant level.